my mission is world peace. And I think when I say that, some people get tripped up, maybe a little bit in their head, maybe a little bit, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, sure. And I think that's because a lot of people have a misconception around what world peace is or what they, how they think it's going to be achieved. You mm -hmm. know, I say world peace and people think, you know, and hunger and all world wars. And they're like, well, how can I, you know, am I going to get into politics? How could I stop a war? How could I eradicate world hunger? How could I do all of these things? And to me, my definition of world peace is when each individual has the freedom to live in their highest and fullest expression of their unique individuality. So, and that can look like many, many different things to many, many different people. And for entrepreneurs, for example, that is, you know, instead of looking at that macrocosm, like let's bring it into the microcosm of maybe you can't, maybe, you know, today or tomorrow, this year, we can't achieve world peace out there in the world, but how can we achieve world peace within ourselves? And if we can get to a level of world peace or peace, inner peace, within ourselves, how can we bring that to our, you know, sort of let that blossom out into our family, our family circles, our friend circles, let that blossom out into our greater community, let that blossom out if we're an entrepreneur, if we're a business owner, let that blossom into our, into our business, into our work culture and how we organize our business. And if we interact with other businesses, how can we interact with other businesses in a, in a, in a peaceful manner that empowers all the individuals involved and if we and if we start there if we start from the individual person it becomes very doable um and i know this from my own from my own personal experience in my own life um and if we start with each, each individual person we can we can blossom out world peace and, and have a much greater much greater impact it's the like the, the rock in the pond you know you got to drop the rock and the river Ex come out but exactly i think you're spot on about that and you talked you know about your personal journey we're all on a journey right mm. so mine changed a, well, a couple of years ago um with the word peace and like you go to church mm. right some people do and uh peace mm -hmm. be with you peace be with you what what does that mean what are you talking about never got it never understood yeah. it and until started feeling that that inner peace and then you know that kind of transcends to a lot of other stuff at the same time yeah, yeah. And I think there's a lot of thing, a lot of words that get thrown out, thrown around in our society and a lot of new age, and a lot of spirituality, like peace and grace and purpose and empowerment. And a lot of people don't really know what that means or what that feels like. And it's something that we can only know by experiencing, by our own direct experience, um, because it's not really something that lives in the mind. And I think that's kind of what drew me to energy healing. Um, I used to be, well, I still am by license, a, a, um, a nurse. And I worked a lot in psychiatric care. Right. And a lot of people will try to mentally understand these concepts um, and not really quite grasp it. Or, you know, they could spit out a definition. But what does that actually mean? And how do we actually embody that and, and live that as our everyday life? It's not something that we just do for a few minutes while we're on our yoga mat or a few minutes while we're in church or a few minutes while we're in prayer how do we actually live that every single day and 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 know it in our hearts and not just and not just in our minds yeah truly live it truly live it yeah. talk about it let's do that so you right. work with a lot of entrepreneurs give your website by the way oh uh it's the light center and in working with entrepreneurs how do you help them achieve your, your definition of, of world peace, which I think is yeah. fantastic, by the way. I, I subscribe to it in a second. I get it. You know what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. People really people really resonate with this. People really resonate with this um, because I think there's, you know, in today's world, there's a huge push to have a greater impact. People really are driven by um, not a lot of these external factors which i think maybe was a driving force in the past but people want to have a purpose they want to matter they want to know that they wake up every morning and and enjoy what they're doing and go to bed every day and feel like they, they've made a difference even if only in for themselves that they've made some sort of difference in the world because I don't think that it's new news that um, the world's kind of in a mess right now. <laughs> We're kind of having a struggle. We're kind of struggling. I haven't, I haven't heard that. I'm not really sure. Really? Yeah. Okay. Not even, yeah. So, yeah, we're kind of, um, 
we're kind of struggling a little bit. Yeah. And uh, need people to get my want- booster. Need to get my booster. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Uh, let's check every day. We check off. We're like, oh my god, there's so many things, and and then they lose themselves. You know, that's that's a whole other a whole other topic I could get into. But um, so people want to want to have a purpose. They want to have an impact. They want to feel like they matter. How do you work with with entrepreneurs or just you know somebody that wants to achieve a change? What do you specifically work on with them? Yeah. So, um, like I said, we, if we want to achieve world peace out there, we have to achieve world peace inside here. Yep. So, um, and you know, and I see a lot of entrepreneurs. I see a lot of people um, expending a lot of time and energy um, and resources on different coaches and different programs and and all these different things, and don't really know like, is this going to work? Is this the right job for me? Should I move? Should I be with this person? Should I quit my job and and buy a van and travel the world? You know what I mean? There's a lot. Of people have a lot of questions about what what do I do in my life? How do I? I know that I'm not happy where I am, or maybe I don't feel totally fulfilled where I am. I know that I want to have a better impact. I know that I want something better, but I don't know what that is, and I don't know how to achieve it. So, uh, and I think, you know, just to throw that out there, I think anything that brings someone closer to knowing who they are is is a worthwhile endeavor, right? Um, so, but what I really focus on um, in, in the path that I offer is strengthening that relationship with yourself, strengthening your own inner intuition of knowing, because I don't know the answers. I don't know what's right for you. I don't know what you should do with your life. I don't know what your greater purpose is. And I can really only ever know as well as you know. So that's what the tools, you know, life activation, for example, is the first session that I offer people. And that's a session that's going to sort of turn the lights on for you to answer those deeper questions that I think everyone asks themselves, like, who am I? What am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going? And what is my purpose in life? And and on many different dimensions, we can ask those levels between who we are just right here in a, you know, in this physical life in this physical body. And what am I meant to do with these 70, 80, maybe 90 years that I have here. And then also like, what's the bigger picture? Like why do humans exist? (laughs) Like, what is this, what is this thing that we're all doing and struggling at? And I feel like we all kind of know that it should be better than this, but how do we, how do we make that real? Um, So that's what the, the path is really structured in a really beautiful way to slowly start like peeling off those layers for you to get to know yourself to really get comfortable with who you are um what your strength and weak strengths and weaknesses are you know um and and you know like i said there is a structure to the way that energy flows in this universe um there is a pathway for how energy flows from unmanifest to manifest so from I'm, I'm you know jump into that but i do want yeah. to commend you in terms of what you're saying in terms of finding your purpose and your you mm-hmm. you know we have so many questions we don't verbalize them a lot of times we just you know I, I, you're on the treadmill of life you just every day going to do the same thing mm-hmm. and um a very famous uh guy he's a celebrity uh very intuitive we'll say that he said to me not long ago, this is like a month, not a month of uh, a year and a month ago, um, habit doesn't equal happiness. Habit doesn't equal happiness. And you're, you're doing your life and it's okay. It can be all right. You know, I'm not complaining. You're here and you know, hopefully things are all right overall, but are you really happy? Are you really, and, and yeah. you're not going to, you need to answer those questions internally and keep asking those questions and maybe even journal and just put that down and just get out of your head. A lot of times we're so deep in our head that you're not answering those. You're not answering. Right. So, you know, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Right. And a couple pieces I want to comment on about what you said um, is, is yeah, habit, habit does not equal happiness. Right. And, and I think it's really important, like you said, to ask the questions of like, yeah, what are my habits? And, I always encourage my clients and anybody in my life to not settle. Don't settle for mediocrity. Mm. Don't settle for like, this is good enough for now. You know, if you want more, you deserve more. If you can imagine something better, you can create something better, you know? And I think that as a society and as a globe, as a global community, we have settled a lot. 
we have accepted a lot of behavior of ourselves and of our brothers and sisters that we know we can do better, yeah. you know, and we know that we deserve better. We deserve better. Um, and that's where you can find that sort of that drive, that passion, that push to, to do better when you know, and, and, and that kind of brings me to the other point I wanted to make, you know, a lot of people focus on the mind, you know, even I might push a little bit of buttons here, but I really don't like the word mindfulness. Um, because it says mindfulness, and we don't want our minds full. <laughs> That's the opposite. Um, being too much in the mind is kind of what brought us to the situation that we're in now. It kind of has created a lot of problems. Yep. Um, is we really want to drop into our heart, you know, and that's where the, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and drop this uh, sort of, I'll drop this word here is magic. So what I do is I do magic. I teach people how to do magic. I do magic, you know, in my sessions for people. Okay. No, wait, no, well, hold on. I know. I know. I know. That, I know. You know, people are going to. World peace, magic. Who but, is this girl? She's like really cosmically cool. I love it. No, but when you say magic, um, do you mean legit magic or is it a magical transformation? You're just using it as a description for what you do. Hmm, maybe both. So my definition of magic is magic is the intersection of art and science. Magic is where art and science meet one okay. another. Magic, you could also give another definition of magic is the transformation of nothing into something or something into something else. So we're kind of doing magic all the time, right? When we try to change our thoughts, we're trying to do magic. We're trying to take something and turn it into something else. Right. And so magic is the best way to do that. Like I said, at the intersection of art and science, we're a very scientific heavy society. It's gotten to the point that science has almost become a religion in of itself. People really depend on science in almost a religious type fashion. Mm -hmm. And science is wonderful. You know, I, I come from a nursing background, like I said, so you know, the technological advancements that we've made with, with cars and, and energy and, and different forms of medicine, it's fantastic. We've prolonged life, you know, and, and we've eradicated a lot of, um, a lot of problems that we've had in, in the world, but obviously we're still struggling. We're still struggling in a lot of major ways. Everyone is still not fed. People are still dying for reasons that they really shouldn't be dying. Mm -hmm. um, so science isn't the only answer. And when people begin a spiritual path, now I'm also gonna preface this by saying that before I became a spiritual guide, I was an atheist. I did not believe in God. Um, I did not subscribe to any religion. I really wanted nothing to do with the whole thing. I get you. But there was, but there was something in me that just couldn't accept that this was it. I couldn't. I couldn't accept that it was just pay taxes and die. Yeah. I couldn't, I just couldn't. Um, so something in me, and that's kind of what began my path of, I was like, anything. I will take anything to help me believe that there's something more out there. And it took yeah, me a believe, long- What do you believe in? Do you I believe, believe in myself. I believe in yeah. you. I believe in God. I believe in Godess. Yeah, I believe and, in the and universe. It, no, no, it's that that wasn't a trick question. That was just a Ooh. I'm curious, you know, based on where you were, where you are. So you believe that there's a, you know, a God, a higher being, something, something, whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that that exists in each, each and every person. It's not something that's outside of ourselves. Like you don't have to go outside of yourself to find God. Sure. God's right here, right? Agreed. God's right here. It's in me. It's in you. And we're actually at a really, you know, if, if you know, I'm going to get a little bit, I'm going to get a little bit out there for a minute. Just oh. hold on for a second. Just plug I'm yourself in. I'm riding your wave. It's okay. <laughs> um, if we are, if you think that, you know, we're on sort of this like eternal, you know, this isn't just it, you know, there's some, some place, something we were doing before we were born and someplace and somewhere we'll go after we die. Right. So we're on this big, long journey and right here, right now in the physical is an opportunity that we have to learn about who and what God is because me being an, being an embodiment of God, goddess, the universe, and you being an embodiment of God, goddess, the universe can sit here and have a conversation about it. And that doesn't really exist in the spiritual realm because in the spiritual realm, everything is oneness. But here in duality in the physical, 
we can learn about this thing that we're all doing by connecting and communicating with each other you know and i think that's sort of the level of authentic connection of true vulnerability of true openness um that is that's the art of life that soulfulness that presence of knowing and understanding how precious each and every moment is and how precious each interaction is and how precious our desires and our wants and our heart and our love like that's the part that i think society is really missing and looking for and when we combine that soulfulness with uh science and technology and you know the ingenuity and the intelligence that's where we can have magic meet you know when we when we go about our lives from a sci- you know maybe from a scientific mind point but with full full emotion and full presence and full knowingness of the beauty and the grace and you know how special it is that we get to live that we get to live this life and smell flowers and and you know experience all of this um that you know we're never going to get yesterday back you, we're you, never going to get you're totally right we take it we take a lot for granted we know we do but we don't do anything about it and i love the word you used i haven't heard it used in so long soulfulness mm. you know you could just walk into a starbucks and you know somebody bumps into you or you know just smiles being friendly i mm-hmm. don't think things happen for a reason maybe that person mm-hmm. was passing by um maybe you were meant to have a conversation but we're all so close that you know it's like all right, I'm just going to get my my latte and I'm right. out cuz we're all just on our treadmill we're on our treadmill yeah we're all just on our treadmill just got to get to the next thing just got to do the next thing just got to yep. pay my bills just got to get you know and it's like wake up and i get yeah. everybody's busy and and we you know you got schedules and you got to do this but, but what does it take that extra couple of seconds literally a couple of seconds um mm-hmm. to be in the moment to observe yeah. what's going on yeah Why did yeah. that person pass by me? Is there a reason for that? I don't know. Say hello. It's okay. Yeah. And that's where that shift of really being connected with your purpose. Yeah. Really makes the difference. And when I talk about purpose, there's kind of two purposes that I talk about. Um is, you know, there's one purpose where it's like, yeah, I just want to be a good person, just want to um you know, uh, maybe you want to have some kids, maybe you want to have a family, maybe you want to, you know, whatever that means for you. And then there's also the bigger purpose of like, yeah, like why are we really here? Like what are we actually doing? Yeah. Yeah. I want to share something with you. I'm going to I'm going to mm-hmm. now I'm turning the car and then I want to get back to the energy part that you talked of. But there's a song that I loved as a kid and it's you know, I heard it again recently. You probably don't know it. It's called The Fuse by Jackson Brown. No. And, and these lyrics is just what we're talking about right now. Um and the years that I spent lost in the mystery fall away leaving only sound of the drum. Like a part of me, it speaks to the heart of me. Forget what life used to be. You are what you choose to be. Mm. Whatever it is you see, the life will become. Mm. And I'm, I'm bringing this so much more that read the lyrics. The only reason I I brought this up because you said You said this. At the end of the song, the song changes. It's kind of an ominous kind of song, but then it changes into a positive beat and it says at the end of the song, "Oh Lord, are there really people starving still? Look out beyond the walls of Babylon. How long will their needs be unfilled?" And then on and on and on. And now it's a uplifting. Help these people out, man. You know, it's Yeah. Used by Jackson Brown. Take a look at the lyrics. It it says I will. It says what you're saying. And listen. Yeah. To it. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's this this deeper desire has been sort of running in the back of humanity's consciousness for ever yeah. forever yeah. you know and I'm actually really grateful you know I know that the world is kind of a mess and we're kind of all in shambles but I'm actually really grateful that it has brought about an opportunity for us to be like wait a second what are we doing why are we doing this Yeah. Why what, what what am I actually, you know? Um so it's kind of finding that trying to find that silver silver lining. I wish it was easier. I wish we, you know, I wish everyone could just wake up tomorrow and just know that they're loved and have world peace and you know all that like light and love well, stuff. But You know what? It starts here. So it starts with, you know, again, the rock in the pond and, you know, we 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 dropped a rock in the pond. So, you know, maybe that resonates. Yeah. Um I want to talk real quick. I can't believe we're 
like almost out of time, but we have time. Uh, the energy part. You, you started. We didn't get into that. I know it's, we're probably going to hit that up another time uh, in detail. But somebody's energy. How do you work with them? How do you change their energy once they realize their purpose and and you know their their life direction? Where do you go from there? Do we ever actually really know? Do we ever like? I'm still kind of like, yeah, okay, I know what it is, but like, it could be greater. Okay, I, I digress. Um, so. It, but it does, it does evolve, you know, because that's, that's, it's kind of, you know, what we study on the path or what we live on the path is, um, is it is a mystery. You know, life is a mystery. The universe is the mystery. There's no end point. There's no like, oh, I got here. You know, maybe if you're Jesus Christ, maybe if you're Buddha, cool. But like very small percentage of people, totally. great goals, life goals, you know. Can you tell um, me what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes? With uh, uncertainty, you know what's going to happen in... I, anything could happen. I don't know. <laughs> I never yeah, no, right, right, right. No, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, do I know what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes? No. Do I know that myself well enough that I can confidently, like, know that I can handle anything that comes towards me because I know myself and I'm grounded in myself and I don't come from a reactionary place? Yes. Okay. So that's kind of inner peace, you know, that's kind of knowing what's going to happen. Because your 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 connection with yourself, knowing yourself, is going to um, it's going to inform every other decision that you make. So any in external influence coming in towards you, you know, doesn't really affect you as much if you have that strong connection with yourself. Yep. Um, I don't think that answers your question, but <laughs> well, it does. It, it answers lots of questions, but I was just curious about the the part. If you work with somebody, let's say it's an entrepreneur or anybody that just wants to change your life, you know, how do you work with their their energy? Because we, we talked about that before, and I'm intrigued. You yeah, know, yeah. So, of- like I said, the first session that I generally offer people offer people is a life activation session. So, in the first half of that session, um, people are you come in, you're standing, and I'm working sort of in your energy structure. Um, sort of like one to two feet around you. I'm working with your etheric field, your auric body, your chakras, um, your magnetic lines, your elemental bodies, and basically giving you like a full energetic car wash to clear, balance, and bring into alignment all of your energetic bodies for the purpose of readying you to receive the actual DNA activation, which is the second half of the session where I use a specialized crystal wand to activate the spiritual part of your DNA, the part of you that knows the answers to who am I, what am I, where am I, you know, all of those deeper questions that I can't answer, but only you can answer for yourself. It kind of turns the lights on, on that inner knowing that you have within you and have, and everyone has within themselves. Um, And that begins an awakening, you know, after that session really begins an awakening process where people start making connections like, oh my goodness, I see how my programming and my belief systems are stopping me here and I see how I'm accepting behavior from others that isn't really in my highest good and I see how I let myself get wrapped up and exact and then they have because all healing is self-healing you know so like you said I drop that pebble in the pond and then you start awakening and you start making the connections and you start putting the pieces together for yourself um and then I'm there you know as your spiritual guide along the way to be your mirror to be your reflector to say okay yeah maybe it's that way have you considered this or yeah, it sounds like you're coming up so, to some really deep programming or some really deep uh, inner child trauma, for example. Let's do a healing session to help you, to empower you to do the work that you need to do to heal that for yourself. Yep, I totally get it. And it's almost like a it's almost like a reset button that you press on somebody. Mm-hmm. You know? that's, that remind me when you said that, because that's a story for another time. Let's give everybody your website. Let's tell them what they can find when they get there. How do they book a session? Yeah, there. so you can find me at uh, thelightcenterboston.com, The Light Center. It's pretty generic. Um, so you can book a consultation there. I do consultations um, in person or over the over the web. Um, I do uh, teach classes both over Zoom and in person at my center here. Um, a lot of the path is uh, the sessions are in person, but I do offer some Zoom empowerment coaching. And I'm actually connected with an international community of light workers who do who offer the same path that I do. Um, so you 
you can, you know, come to me for a life activation or I can refer to you someone in your area for a life activation. And we are global in over 50 countries. Wow. So, um, yeah, so there's always someone willing to help. There's always someone willing to help. It was great talking to you and thank you for the wake up call. You're welcome. Boop, yeah. boop, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mean that. I mean, just in general. And it's, you know, go to the. Oh, go totally. Mm -hmm. go, to, go to the light. And I, I don't mean the light at the end of your life. There's a light in front no. of you. You need to find it. Inside you. Inside. There's a light inside you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Madison White, Madison White, energy healer. It was fantastic talking to you. Go to the. Go to the light, the light center, boston.com. And I look forward to uh, hooking up with you again. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited too. Thank you so much for your time.